And so we love missions. Uh, in fact, a couple weeks ago, we had Daniel and Solvi sharing about Greenland, and they're actually leaving. Da- uh, Daniel's leaving uh, ahead of his wife because of some uh, visa issues and that sort of thing. So we're working on that. But Daniel and Solvi are taking the gospel to Greenland, to the top of the world, and uh, they've got a boat that they're trying to finish getting outfitted. And then the fuel alone for that boat to get it up there from Canada is 14000 bucks just to get it up there. And uh, so it's an expensive venture. But taking the gospel to the top of the world is never easy or cheap. And so we're going to be taking a special offering next Sunday uh, with the goal of raising $40,000. And uh, so we've been talking about this for a couple weeks to kind of get it on our radar so that we can come prepared. And if you bring a check next week, make it out to Light of the World. And again, we're trying to raise 40000 bucks and get them up there and get that mission moving forward. So uh, last year we raised about $50,000 to buy the boat, and now we're outfitting it and getting it up there. So it's going to be really, really fun. Um, I don't know if I said this, but the Kesslers uh, are in Africa right now, and they're drilling wells and uh, putting, giving uh, clean water to people who don't necessarily have clean water. So a lot of really good things are happening. A lot of our guys are gone today in Pismo Beach at Thousand Hills Ranch. Uh, there's a men's retreat happening there. It's Saturday at noon to Sunday at noon, and so a bunch of guys are out there. I was out there yesterday uh, giving my testimony and, and just hanging out with a couple hundred guys, and it was a lot, a lot of fun. And as I was giving my testimony, it reminded me kind of how desperate our lives were in our family before Christ came into our lives, and then the transformational process that has taken place over the last decades where Jesus has just kind of changed our lives and filled us and has done really amazing things. And that's really, as we study through Proverbs, that's kind of what we see. We see the capacity of God to give us wisdom to lead fulfilled lives, free lives, uh, lives filled with gratitude and uh, just touched by the love and the goodness of God. And so we're grateful to be studying through Proverbs. We're going to get through all of Proverbs chapter 2 today. And um, as you know, each week we pray for a different church, and this week we're praying for Hillside Church in Grover Beach, and we're going to pray for the guys at M24 who are getting ready to wrap up there and for the missions work that we're a part of. So let's, as we turn to Proverbs chapter 2, let's go ahead and pray, and uh, we'll, we'll keep the service moving here. Lord Jesus, we are thankful for the opportunity to partner with people as they travel the globe, taking the gospel all over the place, Lord. And uh, so we agree with Daniel and Solvi as they get ready to go to the top of the earth, top of the world, and uh, take the gospel there with their boat. And so we just pray blessing upon them, Lord, that they would be able to outfit the boats and get the crew ready to go so that July 1st they can set sail and get out of here, Lord God. So we just pray blessing upon them and uh, for provision for them. Pray as a church that we'd be able to do what what we're called to do and and really bless that, Lord. And we pray for the men who are wrapping up their time at Thousand Hills Ranch at the M24 uh, Men's Retreat. Lord, we just pray continued blessing on men as they're receiving and growing and learning and just having a good time together um, as men uh, from really churches all over the Central Coast and in Bakersfield also, Lord. So we're just so thankful for what you're doing. Um, just among people in your kingdom, you're growing people and saving people and transforming people, Lord. And we know that we partner with other churches in the community. So we pray for Hillside Church, Lord, for Pastor Ron Kennedy. We pray for their wisdom. And as we teach through Proverbs, learning about all the wisdom of God, we, we know that, God, you, you are the source of wisdom. And so we pray that you would be their source and their resource for wisdom, God, that you would watch over them and protect them as they move forward, as they minister to people in the community. We just pray that they would have clear vision and provision for their work and ministry. So watch over Hillside Church, we pray in Jesus' name. Lord, as we open up Proverbs 2, speak to us. God, we've got ears to hear. We want to receive and respond and do what you've asked us to do with this truth. So be glorified as we open up the scripture, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So we've titled the message today, The Benefits of Wisdom. And I didn't have to work real hard on that title because that's the heading of this passage in my Bible. <laughs> the Benefits of Wisdom. I thought that's a good title for this, uh, for this study. So that's what we're calling it, The Benefits of Wisdom. And as we read through the scripture, we're going to see the benefits that, that we receive, the, the treasures that we receive as we just avail ourselves to the truth of God and the wisdom of God and the goodness of God. And so we'll just jump right in and 
We'll start with verse 1, and we'll get all the way to the end of the chapter, and we'll wrap things up. So Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1 says, My child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. So Solomon's instructing his child to listen. He's instructing us to listen, not just to give ear service, not just to pretend to listen, but to actually listen. That word means to take and carry along, to receive and to accept. So we're actually taking the truth that we're reading and we're carrying it along with us in our lives. We're not just giving it a flippant little read and forgetting about it. In fact, that's the goal. Whenever we open up the scripture, we should say, God, what do you want me to take with me today? I mean, what you know what I'm going to face today. You know what I'm up against today. What do you want me to take into my heart so that I have what I need to face what I'm going to face? And so that's really the, the design, uh, the plan that God has for Scripture, that we would actually take in that truth and carry it with us, that we would receive it, that we would accept it. Proverbs 7, 1 says, follow my advice, my son. So we take that wisdom, we follow that. Proverbs 7, 1 says, follow my advice, my son, always treasure my commands. And so we have this, this treasure in our presence. And how many, if, boy, if you had a treasure buried in the backyard, what would you do? You'd want to go dig that thing up, right? You'd be excited about the treasure in your backyard. You'd get your shovels and your picks, and you'd be back there digging it up until you got what you were after. And that's really what the Word of God is for us. It's a treasure that we seek out in the Word of God. And as we, as we look and as we uh, ask and seek and knock for God's treasure and God's wisdom, boy, he, he begins to download that to us and deposit that into our lives. And, and the, 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 the plan is that we would take that with us, with every conversation, with every interaction, with every decision, with every plan, we would take the wisdom of God with us and we'd walk in the supernatural plans and purposes that God has for us. He wants us to take that truth and apply it to our lives and our relationships and to everything that we're a part of in this earth. Verse 2 says, tune your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. So Solomon is telling his child to work at wisdom. Now wisdom is not going to come easy. Wisdom, I'm finding, is a lifelong pursuit. But as we pursue wisdom with all of our hearts, God will download what we need so that we might have wisdom for our lives. Solomon said, tune your ears. This requires time and investment. A good technician can listen to an engine and tell you if it's in a good shape or if it needs a valve job or a tune-up. A good technician can listen to, they've tuned their ears to uh, the sound of a motor so they can tell, hey, is this, this, this is a good motor or a bad motor. How do they, how do they know that? Years, right, of tuning their ears, listening. Uh, you go to the mechanic, oh, yeah, it sounds like you need a valve job. How do you know that? Right, right. Most People don't know what that sounds like, but when a technician is tuned his ear, they have that ability to discern what needs to be done with the car. So a novice can't hear what they hear. They have tuned their ears to hear things that tell them the story. Listen, a flippant or superficial attempt will not get you there, right? A superficial or flippant attempt will not give us the training, the tuning that we need to live our lives the way that God has called us to live our lives according to his wisdom. We have to invest ourselves, give ourselves to the, the word of God, our relationship with God, give ourselves to the person of God. And as we do that, we develop this wisdom for our lives. Wisdom and understanding require the individual to press in, hungering for truth. Have you ever been really hungry? Like you can't wait to get some lunch in you, right? Maybe you're thinking about that right now. You're in church. It's like 1130 and lunch is coming. You're getting really hungry. Don't think about that. <laughs> think about the truth that is before you and begin to hunger for that. Sometimes we, we, we lack that hunger for the truth of God's word. And if we're lacking that, if we just ask the Lord, God, I, I need you to give me a fresh hunger, a fresh thirst, a fresh desire. God, would you give me something new in my soul so that I begin to understand my need for you, so that I hunger and thirst for your truth, for your righteousness, for your wisdom. As we do that, God will answer us. He's listening to us. He's going to respond to our needs. In fact, verse 3 says, cry out for it. 
cry out for insight. That speaks to me of some desperation, right? Like, God, I need you now. I need your wisdom. I need you to speak something of life for me. I'm up, I'm up against something difficult. And, and the wise person will cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Verse 4 says, search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. There it is again. This word of God, this wisdom of God is a treasure that God wants to give to us. Boy, don't you want to, as good parents, don't you want to give good gifts to your kids? Absolutely. I got four kids and three grandkids, and I want to give them good gifts, right? And I'm broken and flawed in so many ways, but I want to still give good gifts to my kids. God, who is perfect and not flawed in any way, has a great desire to give us great gifts. And so he's saying, I've given you this treasure. I want to, I want to make sure you understand it. I want to make sure you're able to hide it in your heart. And so that when you're ready to use it, it's, it's available to you. So cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. Then you will understand. That word understand means to perceive intelligently. Isn't that what we want? We want to have intelligence. We want to have a clear perception of what God is teaching us as we read the scripture. As we, as we press in for understanding, God will give us an intellect, an increased intellect for his truth. I don't know about you, but I, I, I grew up struggling intellectually my whole life. As a, as a young man, I had zero intellectual uh, uh, self-disciplines. Uh, uh, I, I struggled all the way through high school, and, and then they finally kicked me out at the end, and I went off to college and took all of those bad study habits to my first year of college and really struggled my first year of college, and, and I, just, I just didn't understand the value of it. But then after my first year, I just began to ask the Lord for uh, just the capacity to, to think differently about academics and to, and to invest my heart and invest my mind. And, and over time, God began to do that. I began to develop new disciplines by his grace because he's good, not because I'm good. And I was able to graduate from college and, and seminary as an honor student. And God, it was just something that God did because he's faithful. When we pursue God and pursue his plans and want his wisdom and his ways in our lives. He can take the most broken person, the messed, most messed up person, and, 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 and turn beauty into ashes. He can do amazing things because he's just so faithful. He wants to give us good gifts. I was out at the M24 conference yesterday, the, the uh, camp out, and you know, there's a couple hundred guys, people from all walks of life, and there's some guys who just got out of prison, guys who have you know, got messed up marriages and families, and then there's other guys who are, you know, seem to have everything together, and we're just all coming together, realizing that we have this desperate need for Jesus. So we might, some of us look good on the outside, some of us on the outside, some of us look like we're a mess on the outside, but God knows our heart, the condition of our heart, that we all need his grace and his goodness poured out upon us. And when we come humbly asking for those things, he just wants to pour it out upon us and bless us and fill us and train us and teach us and, and make our lives something we never thought possible. That's what he's able to do. He's able to take our brokenness and make us productive and make us whole again, and make us beautiful by his grace. We begin to look more and more like Jesus as we keep our eyes on him, and less and less like our old man, our old self, and God just begins to do supernatural and wonderful things in our lives. Verse 5, then you will understand, perceive intellect, uh, intelligently what it means to fear the Lord and you will gain knowledge, and you will gain knowledge of God, for the Lord grants wisdom. So knowledge and wisdom comes from God, and God wants us to have that wisdom. Listen, He's not holding it back, not wanting you to have it. James 1:5 says, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God. We need to get that in our heads, some of us, and in our hearts, that God is generous. He's not wanting to withhold, not longing to withhold, but longing to give, to bless. If you need wisdom, ask your generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He's the source of knowledge and understanding. And not just spiritual knowledge and understanding. He's, he's the source of all knowledge and understanding. And, and whatever field you are in, he is the source of knowledge 
and understanding. He knows exactly what we need for our lives, and he will give us what we need. I remember uh, probably 25 years ago, I was starting a new job and uh, had little kids and lots of, lots of expenses with those little kids, and, and uh, I, needed a, I needed a good job, and so I applied for this good job, and I had a buddy who managed the area that I was wanting to get involved in, so he hired me and uh, took a chance on me, and I knew nothing about the industry, absolutely nothing about the industry, but I knew that I needed the job, and I knew that I needed the, the paycheck connected to the job, and so I jumped in, and my buddy took a chance on me, and the Lord opened the doors, and I just began to apply myself and just ask the Lord for help. And every day I'd get up, Lord, I know nothing about what I'm doing. I'm so in over my head, and I'm supposed to know something in my position. And, and the Lord would just continually, day by day, show me what I needed and give me the grace. And, and then years later, my buddy said, like the guy who was training me, he said, hey, you picked it up faster than anybody that I know. <laughs> I said, you know that was the grace of God, right? <laughs> I tell you what, we never arrive in this earth. We're always so humble and dependent on Jesus. No matter what we do in life, we're always, we should always wake up dependent on Jesus. We've been, you know, we planted the church 15 years ago. I wake up every day wondering what in the world we're going to do next. I'm like, Lord, I have no idea how you're sustaining this thing. I have no idea what you have in store for us, but we're just going to keep believing for great things keep trusting you and keep following you. I tell you, if we wake up and, and we feel like we got to figure it out, we're probably in trouble, right? <laughs> if I feel like I got to figure it out, I, I, I got I to gotta back up and slow down and, and get back to a right, right place with the Lord because as quickly as I think I've got it figured out, I could mess it up. Just like breathing, I can mess it up, right? And so we just need to be humble and gracious and allow the Lord to continue to give us the knowledge and understanding that we need. Verse 7 says he grants a treasure of common sense to the honest, and he is a shield to those who walk with integrity. Man, if you're lacking common sense in an area and in your life, God, God has the, the treasure of common sense that he wants to bestow upon you. He wants to give that to the honest, he, and he wants to be a shield. We're always asking the Lord for protection, aren't we? We're always asking the Lord to help us, and, but he wants to be a shield to those who walk with integrity. And so if we want God to shield us from danger, we have to be men and women who walk with integrity, living our lives above reproach, honoring the Lord with our decisions. None of us will do it perfectly, but man, when we fall short, we, I, I talk about keeping short accounts with the Lord, so when we mess up, we say, hey, let's just get right to the cross, confess and repent. The Bible says if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So we keep short accounts, living our lives with integrity, the best to the best of our ability and in that attempt in that desire God is a shield protecting us he wants to do that in your own life he wants to protect you I think when we get to heaven we're going to kind of get a play-by-play -play of all the ways in which God protected us I think we get through the day and we don't even realize how many times God protected us from accident or from injury we just have the presence of God and the goodness of God watching out for us why does he do that because he loves us. We're his kids. He's adopted us into his family, and so he is a shield. How badly do you want to protect your own kids, right? You want to protect them from danger, from injury, from bad choices, right? God wants to do the same things with us. We have that desire because we're connected to God, the heavenly, our heavenly father. We have that same desire, that same heart that he does to protect, to be a shield. He just does it a lot better than we do. He is a shield, to those who walk with integrity. Verse 8, he guards the paths of the just and protects those who are faithful to him. So there's just beauty in this wisdom-filled relationship with God. Then, after all this, uh, when we have listened to and treasured the words and commands of God, when we have tuned our ears, when we have cried out, when we have asked diligently when we do what verse says verse 4 says when we search for them as for silver seek them like hidden treasures when we're seeking the wisdom of God and the plans of God then wonderful and supernatural things begin to take place there's this then in verse 9 it's like this emphatic then like this is what 
will happen. You can be sure that this will happen if you do what the scripture says. There's this emphatic reality, this truth that God is trying to communicate to us. Then you will understand what is right, just, and fair, and you will find the right way to go. Isn't that our question often? Lord, which direction do I take? Which way do I go? Is this the right way? Is this the right path? Is this the right decision? When we are pressing in, allowing the wisdom of God to fill our hearts, he will show us which path to take. He will show us what is right and just and fair. He's not going to leave us alone trying to figure it out on our own. That's not what we signed up for when we became followers of Jesus. What we signed up for is his lordship. We got adopted into his family. So he is in us and we are in him. And as we abide in him and he abides in us, we, we produce much fruit. There's just this, this interconnected relationship that we have with the Lord. So we, we have this promise that if we do these things, we will have understanding. We will understand what is right, just, and fair, and we will, we will find the right way to go. Verse 10, for wisdom will enter your heart, and knowledge will fill you with joy. Wisdom filling your heart. Verse 10 reminds, reminds of the truth of verse 1. It says, listen. What does it mean to listen again? It means to take and carry along. It means to receive it, to accept it. So we're not just giving, you know, you know, passive uh, attention to the word of God. We're listening to it. We're accepting it. We're receiving it. We're packing it up and taking it with us so that wherever we go, we have the wisdom of God for every circumstance, every conversation. Listen, God will begin to give you the wisdom that you need as you do that with every conversation. Your conversation will be richer. Uh, often we're, we're giving counsel out of our head, out of our intellect, and what people need is counsel out of the wisdom that God has given to us that has been stored up in our hearts. The temptation, though, is to give counsel out of our intellect because that's easier for us. We can kind of control that. We've got kind of, uh, you know, we've got kind of the, 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 the market cornered there. But what often God wants to do is he wants us to slow down in our conversations and listen to the, the heart of God and, and, and tap into the wisdom of God so that when we're speaking to people, we're giving them something of value, eternal value. We, we're giving them something that is nourishment for their soul that will help them with the challenges before them, with the temptations in their lives. And, and God will take those kind of conversations that we have, those times of fellowship together, times at church and in Bible studies and with our neighbors and friends and coworkers, and he'll take those and make those opportunities where we can deposit seeds of life and grace and truth. There's just something sweet about God, what God wants to do as we listen, as we take and carry along and receive and accept the wisdom that he has for us. So when we listen to wisdom, it enters our hearts and knowledge that follows fills us with joy. There's just such great joy when we understand what God wants us to do, right? When we don't know what God wants us to do, we're full of anxiety. We're fearful. We're anxious. We're just, we're a mess, right? But when we have clarity, even if the, it seems like everything's falling apart, there's just this peace and even this joy that follows that. So when it seems like everything's falling apart and you know that you've got the wisdom of God for the situation, you're just, you just have this joy, and this peace, and you're able to walk through it and not carry a heavy, heavy burden. So when we listen to wisdom, it enters our hearts, and the knowledge that follows fills us with joy. Proverbs 14, 33 says, Wisdom is enshrined in an understanding heart. Wisdom is not found among fools. So if you're feeling foolish in an area, and boy, we have all felt foolish in certain areas. If we're feeling foolish in a particular area... All we have to do is ask the Lord for the wisdom of God, and then all of a sudden we just have clarity, understanding, answers. We understand the right path, and we're able to walk in that path with greater confidence, knowing that God is walking with us. Proverbs twenty two eighteen 18 says, For it is good to keep these, these wise sayings, in your heart and always ready on your lips. And so we have this opportunity to allow our hearts to be filled so that when we're in those crucial conversations, we can speak truth and wisdom 
words of grace and wisdom from the Lord to a person in desperate need. We're, we're encountering desperate people all the time. Not just me because I'm a pastor, but all of us are encountering desperate people all the time. And if we just settle down and slow down and listen up, God will show us what we need to communicate that is life-giving and helpful and good for that person in their need, in their situation. Listen, we all need wise people in our lives. The Bible says that there's wisdom and a multitude of counsel. When we have wise people around us helping us make wise choices, we're going to do better in life. I don't know about you. Some of the wisest people in my life are the unsuspecting. They're not necessarily people with letters after their name. They're not necessarily people in positions that distinguish them as wise and, 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 and intelligent people. They're not even necessarily marked by exceptional appearance. There's just something simple and wonderful about um, a person who is just filled with the wisdom of God. What they possess is internal. What they possess is internal, and it's very, very rich. Wisdom is available to all of us. Every one of us can be growing in wisdom. Isn't that great? We need to get a hold of that. Right? We need to be growing in our capacity to have wisdom and the, the heart of God as well as the mind of God. Someone said a wise man can learn more from a foolish question than a fool can learn from a wise answer. <laughs> I'm going to read that again. It's pretty good. Someone said a wise man can learn more from a foolish question than a fool can learn from a wise answer. So we need exposure to wise people and wisdom-filled truth. Why? Wise choices, verse 11 says, wise choices will watch over you. Understanding will keep you safe. So God wants to watch over you with his wisdom. He wants to keep you safe. I, I, I think we're up against difficult things all the time, and we've got challenges coming our way that we're not even aware of. And God will watch over us and keep us safe in the midst of that as we just yield ourselves to him, apply the wisdom of God, allow the presence of God to fill us, the wisdom of God to fill us, and wonderful things are the result. Wisdom will watch over your world, and not just your spiritual world. God is not only interested in your spiritual life. He's interested in your whole life. Your body, soul, and spirit, your mind, will, and emotion, he's interested in every part of us. And so he wants to give us wisdom that will watch over us. He wants to keep us safe in every arena of life. Financially, he wants to watch over us and help us to make wise choices. Proverbs 13, 11 says, wealth from get-rich-quick schemes quickly disappears. Wealth from hard work grows over Time. So he's wanting to give us wisdom about how to build wealth. Don't try to grow it quickly. It's probably not going to happen. Just steadily plod along, go to work, put money away, do what you're supposed to do, as the scripture says, and God will grow your bank account slowly and surely. And so when you're ready to retire or do whatever it is that God's called you to do, he will take care of your needs. There's just wisdom for our financial world relationally we need wisdom for our lives relationally in our marriages but we can get off track easily and quickly we need we need wisdom for that ecclesiastes 10:10 10, 10 says using a dull axe requires great strength so sharpen the blade that's the value of wisdom. It helps you succeed. So God has the capacity to help us succeed in every arena of our life. Some of us are working really hard in our relationships, maybe with our spouses. We're working really hard, and it feels like our marriages are just struggling and getting harder and not getting easier. And, and God's saying, hey, maybe it's time to just slow down and sharpen the ax. What does that look like? Well, I don't know. It's going to be different in every marriage. But I know that your marriage is meant to be strong and vibrant. Think about your relationship when you first started dating your spouse. Pretty exciting, right? Kind of get excited to see each other. <laughs> Date night's coming. I want to see my girl, you know, and you kind of get excited about it. You, you're, you're, you want to give her a little kiss, so you got to make sure you got breath mint in you, because you don't want to... You don't want to have stinky breath, right? So you make sure your breath is smelling good, and so when you go in for a kiss, she's not repulsed, right? So maybe when you're coming home from work, you're thinking, I'm going to greet my wife with a kiss, so I'm going to make sure I get a little breath mint in me, make sure my breath smells good, 
make her come, make her want to come back for more. I don't know about you. I, I've been married to my wife for 28 years, and and I, I enjoy kissing her as much today as I did 28 years ago. True story. And listen, listen, your sex life can get better all the time as well. <laughs> God created sex. I didn't. He, he's the one that brought it up. He's the one that created it. I'm just talking about it, right? <laughs> Don't get nervous. <laughs> this is God's idea. God's agenda. God's plan, right? So your sex life is actually supposed to get better with time, right? It's not supposed to diminish. And so if you're struggling there, just sharpen the axe. Figure out what you got to do to get, that, to get that going again. So maybe it's about, hey, acting toward your spouse like you used to act toward your spouse. I want to bring mama home some flowers. Or I'm going to... I'm going to press his shirts or make his favorite meal. I'm going to do whatever. We're going to have a date night. We're going to get out on a regular basis and get a little time away, just the two of us. We're going to invest in our relationship, commit ourselves there, and watch what God will do to reestablish the fireworks. Listen, the firework can be good all the days of your married life. But you got to work at it. We got to work at this stuff, right? So if we're if we're struggling in that area, then that's stop and sharpen the axe, right? We get so busy, we're working so hard, we're trying to do the right stuff, but we're not paying attention to the important stuff. So what's the important stuff that we need to pay pay attention to in our relationship with our spouse, but then what in our relationship with our kids as well? I talked to my daughter last week. I said, man, we haven't had a good conversation in a long, long time. She's been married for about six years. She's got three little boys, and she's busy, and I'm busy. I said, let's go have coffee. She's like, okay. I said, when's a good day to have coffee? She said, Friday's, Logan's off on Friday. Let's go Friday. So then she gets with my wife. Is everything okay? <laughs> Dad wants to have coffee. <laughs> That's how long it's been, right? So I was thinking about that. I thought, man, I need to have relationship with my daughter. I want to have a connection with my daughter. She's awesome. And so we decided that we're going to have coffee this coming Friday. And so what, what do we need to do in our relationships to sharpen the axe? What do we need to do to, to make sure that God's on the throne of our lives and that those important things are really getting taken care of? God's in, in, interested in our lives spiritually, physically, emotionally, relationally, financially. He's interested and he wants to watch over our lives. Verse 12 says, wisdom will save you from evil people from those whose words are twisted. Listen, wisdom gives discernment to see what is not immediately or, uh, or, or naturally obvious. There are things in our lives that are happening that we need to be able to discern, and God's wisdom will help us to discern those things. There are some things that aren't naturally obvious to us in the physical but in the, in the supernatural realm, in the spiritual realm, God can begin to show us things, people that we should be careful of. People maybe we shouldn't believe. People that we just maybe keep a distance from because they're unsafe. There's wisdom and discernment that God wants to give us to keep us away from evil people. Verse 13 says, these men turn from the right way to walk down dark paths. And these men that the scripture is talking about are evil people who habitually make bad choices. Solomon's saying, don't follow them. If there's people in your life who are habitually, habitually making bad choices, stay away from those people. These men turn from the right way to walk down dark paths. So we stay away from them. Why? Because they take pleasure in doing wrong, verse 14. And they enjoy the twisted ways of evil, verse 15. Their actions are crooked and their ways are wrong. So wisdom will save you from evil people and other trouble. It's okay to stay clear of evil people and avoid people who will take you down because of their evil intents. Verse 16, wisdom will save you from the immoral woman, from the seductive words of, a, of the promiscuous woman. She has abandoned her husband and ignores the covenant she made before God. Entering her house leads to death. As in the road to, or it is the road to the grave. Verse 19, the man who visits her is doomed. He will never reach the paths of life. Don't entertain yourself with ideas about going somewhere else to get your needs met. Stay with your spouse. The grass is greener where you water it. So get busy watering it in your own yard and quit looking over the fence at somebody else's yard. 
Guard your heart. Take care of yourself. Be careful what you put in front of your eyes, that you're not tempted to lust, to be drawn away by those, those physical things. Make sure that God is the source of your contentment, that he is in the middle of your life, body, soul, and spirit, mind, will, and emotion. And then, out of that healthy place, your life will be protected. You won't even have a desire to, to go down the evil path. You'll just, you'll just have this clarity about that. I don't want that. That's destructive. The Bible says there's a way which seems right to a man, but the end thereof is the way of death. On, you know, you kind of look at something. That doesn't look too bad. It's bad. <laughs> Steer clear. The scripture is clear. Stay away from those things that will bring destruction to your life. So there, there are paths that most certainly lead to life. That's what God wants us to take. And there are paths that most certainly lead to destruction. And they're all spelled out in the scripture. We just have to pay attention and avail our hearts and minds to that and submit to those things. Verse 20 says, so follow the steps of the good and stay on the paths of the righteous. For only the godly will live in the land and those with integrity will remain in it. But the wicked will be removed from the land and the treacherous will be uprooted. What did God do when he was taking his, the people of Israel into the promised land? He uprooted all the evil people so that the good people could go in, right? That's a promise from God. If we just honor him with our integrity, he will give us good gifts. Jesus told us it's the meek who will inherit the earth. What's the definition of a meek person? Some think, well, that's, a, that's kind of a timid, shy, weak person. But really, the definition of someone who is meek is someone who is powerful and strong, but under, with great self-control. It's uh, Meekness is not weakness, I heard years ago, but it's strength under control. And so God wants us to have uh, confidence in who we are in him, strength as followers of, of God. He wants us to be sure of who we are in Jesus, but he wants us to be under control, self-controlled in our strength and in our boldness and in our confidence. God wants to bestow a blessing upon us. So follow the steps of the good and stay on the paths of the righteous, for only the godly will inherit the land and those with integrity will remain in it, but the wicked will be removed from the land and the treacherous will be uprooted. So God's got good stuff in store for us as we study Proverbs. And so the challenge, read a proverb a day. You'll get through Proverbs every month and God will give you truth downloaded into your heart and you'll be able to speak words of wisdom and grace to the people that you encounter. And that's just what we're called to do. We can be salt and light, encouraging people that we don't even know we're encouraging when we're just walking in the wisdom of God. We can all walk in that wisdom. We can all have that, 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 that kind of intellect that God will download to us if we just yield to him. So we're going to pray. I'm going to invite the worship team forward, and we're going to sing some songs and um, do some business with the Lord. And wherever you need the Lord to, to, to uh, give you wisdom, just begin to ask and yield yourself to him, and he will give that. So Lord, we bow our heads, and we open our hearts and avail ourselves to you. We say your will be done. God, we're submitted to you, and we need your help. That's just the reality. We absolutely need your help. We are absolutely dependent on you. Lord, where we have blind spots around this uh, idea, Lord, I pray that you would help us to see the reality that we are ultimately dependent on you if we're going to be fruitful. Lord, help us to abide in you, and God, that you might abide in us, that we might be fruitful and bear much fruit, Lord. So thank you for this time. Bless us as we sing in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand up. We'll sing.